Who knew 2020 would be the year of Wi-Fi tier lists? Probably nobody. The Wi-Fi tier list is a pretty bizarre concept. The entire idea of a tier list, it kind of depends on consistency. We base tier lists on how consistent a character wins and loses. However, we also base tier lists on how good we think the character will do in the future, even if we don't know what the future holds. And Wi-Fi is the king of inconsistency. Sometimes you have a smooth connection, and sometimes you'll end up on the other side of the stage with the slideshow and not even know what happened. Tier lists also look at the highest level of competition, including tournaments and the meta, but a lot of the top players don't even play in the online tournaments given to them. So remember not to take Wi-Fi tier lists too seriously. We don't have all the factors to be able to go through and give perfect Wi-Fi tier lists, and there's just a lot of people that don't enter, so you can only expect so much. Instead, you should try to take your training seriously, and to do that, you can go to ProGuides.com. We've got courses from pros and a live coaching platform to help you improve immediately. If that isn't enough, check out our Discord so that you can be able to play with other people that are also looking for people to play with. Last but not least, what characters do you like to fight online? Alright, before we get into the full list, let's talk about the rankings. First, we're looking at online tournament meta, not quick play. If this doesn't match your quick play experience, that's because it's not supposed to. Second, we're still looking at tournament results, but not as much. That's because some of the best character representatives just don't play online much. And because there's a lot of character switching and general shenanigans in the world of Wi-Fi, instead, we're going to look at what characters would be good if the online meta was the main meta. Third, if you want to know what makes a character good or bad on Wi-Fi, check out the video we made about it. It's actually kind of complicated. To dumb it down, it's about reaction times. It's harder to react online and some characters can abuse that. Fourth and final, we're also going to be looking at the meta. Because certain archetypes are better online, certain characters will get more play. So Wi-Fi makes some characters have to deal with their harder matchups more often. And that's it! Now let's get rolling with the low tiers. Jigglypuff! In Ultimate, one of Puff's struggles is to get in. Whether it's projectiles or disjoints, Puff gets zoned hard. And guess what the Wi-Fi meta is chalk of? Yep, you're right, zoners. Wi-Fi makes her matchups and her tech worse too. Puff's big strengths are in aerial spacing, rest confirms, and edge guarding. Wi-Fi weakens all of that, making it painfully hard for her to get kills, all while being very easy to KO. In quick play, Puff can do a bit better by just reading lazier opponents. In tournaments, it's another story. Lucario. Lucario might be a mid-tier on paper. He might be able to do decently on Wi-Fi by just playing keep away and spamming big hits at high percents. But in practice, Lucario is one of the worst on Wi-Fi, and it's all because of the meta. In the Wi-Fi meta, there just isn't a reason to play Lucario over other zoners. Samus, the Belmots, or even me, Gunner. All these characters just keep more of their identity and strengths than Lucario. Lucario's cool stuff, like Aura Sphere confirms, can easily get lost on Wi-Fi, leaving him to a much worse version of Samus or even Mewtwo. And while he could live longer due to drop combos, he could also die earlier due to a shield input getting lost in the netcode. So on paper, Lucario might be better, but in practice, he's so underplayed and so unoptimized on Wi-Fi that he's low tier. Isabel. Isabel is in a similar spot as Lucario. Yeah, she can zone, and she can pocket stuff from the other zoners, but she's just so lacking compared to the other great Wi-Fi characters that she's probably not going to make a splash online. So far, she's got no real results. Not to mention, Isabel's super light and lacks her own hard-hitting low-end lag moves, so she's even more likely to die early and lose matches online. Plus, a lot of her rough matchups are strong on Wi-Fi. She could easily run into a Roy, Sonic, and Cloud back to back to back. And that's some rough news for her. Bayonetta. All of Bayo's combos still work online and her combo openers can be a bit harder to deal with. However, she still struggles to kill and it's all the more likely she dies early. She doesn't really zone well and doesn't break zones that well either, so she'll struggle in the meta as well. She's not quite as underrepresented or bad as other low tiers though. With the patience to build up 180% each stock, she could be a mid tier. However, she doesn't have a lot of great potential options to threaten and beat shielding and she does best when with punishing and reading opponents. Two things that are hard online. So there's some potential, but overall, this witch probably won't carry anyone online in ultimate online play. Pichu. We're topping off low tier if the character really falls from grace when they enter the online arena. Pichu. Unfortunately, Pichu is just terribly designed for Wi-Fi. He's super lightweight and he can't spam all day because he'll hurt himself. It's a recipe for getting hit by a rando F smash and dying at 50%. Not to mention, Pikachu's loops are a lot trickier to do with latency. Most of his combos are pretty precise and he has some pretty reactive tools too. 
Offline, he gets a lot of mileage from edge guarding too, which he can't do as well online. Overall, he's just way too precise for Wi-Fi. Pichu isn't completely off on Wi-Fi, as he's still got great damage, good multi-hit hitboxes, and fast moves. He's also small and fast, making him elusive. But he's not nearly as good as offline, and we're seeing most of his main switch characters for online brackets. Sometimes they switch for matchups, other times they switch for a whole tournament. Either way, it's a bad look for the little rat that once terrorized tournaments and tier lists everywhere. Now that we've handled the worst Wi-Fi characters, let's get to the kind of better ones, the excitingly mediocre world of the low mid-tier. This is where you start seeing some shakeups. Byleth. Much of Byleth's neutral hinges on spacing, and pretty precise spacing at that. An ever-fluctuating online connection makes precise spacing pretty tricky. Since a lot of Byleth's moves are slower too, it means they can't successfully spam attacks like other characters. Her projectile gets better, but it's too linear to give them the zoner's neutral that thrives online. Byleth's best strength might be ledge trapping, and Wi-Fi can make that harder given how the delay changes reactions. The only thing that gets better for Byleth is her ability to spam big hits, but even her smash attacks need spacing. And her other big hits have too much lag to spam safely. Incineroar. Incineroar is a really weird case. Incineroar will be buffed against any brawly characters. His big hits are easier to land and harder to punish. He's tougher to edge guard on Wi-Fi, so his biggest downside is muted too. But Incineroar gets nerfed slightly against disjoints and nerfed hard against projectiles. That's because offline a projectile can give Incineroar a free revenge charge. Online, Incineroar can't react as quickly, meaning he can't punish players as hard for camping. He's always struggled against zoners, but now the struggle is even more real and more common. Marth. Marth pretty much has the same problems as Byleth. He relies on spacing to maximize his game, and spacing is a lot harder and less consistent online. However, he is not quite low tier because he still has great hitboxes and some very fast options. In fact, on paper he's probably higher up if it weren't for Lucina. Lucina is a better Marth offline and tends to steal the thunder there too. Online it's even worse. Lucina just stays good, or maybe slightly worse online. Meanwhile, Marth takes an even bigger hit, and the result is that Marth doesn't really have a ton of people playing him online. After all, his own defining feature kind of just becomes the downside. Maybe he'll do well in the right hands, but no one's picked him up, and it's likely no one will. Falco has two big strengths, comboing and edge guarding. Wi-Fi makes both of these things harder. He can still get a lot of up tilt conversions, but the more complex drag down combos become a lot harder to pull off. Since he has a lot of important multi-hit moves, it's easier to not get the hit that you want in general. He's not low tier because he still has good anti-zoning tools and some nice raw moves. He'll struggle against disjoints and some of the stronger characters online, but he can do decently against some of the strong zoners online. And that makes him not too bad on Wi-Fi, just not too good either. Fox. Fox might take one of the biggest drops in the tier list when you switch from online to offline. His combos are pretty precise, making them easy to miss online. That's a big deal because his high damage and early kill confirms define his character. He's a glass cannon if he nerf his aggression. He's more like a glass pistol. On paper, he might be a better Wi-Fi character than we think. His shine is a good anti-zoning tool, and he has some low end lag aerials that he can spam over and over. He also can't get edge guarded as hard as normal, but the results don't bear out. Fox is a super prevalent character offline, but you don't see him nearly as much in online tournaments. His mains regularly use other picks or just don't play in online tournaments. That's a bad sign for this spacey. Little Mac. Now we're getting into the hot takes. Chances are, you saw Little Mac this low on the list and you could already dislike this video. You ran into Little Mac on FD earlier today on Quick Play, and he's just busy writing a comment right about now. But take off those metaphorical boxing gloves and think about it for a second. Little Mac is a total Quick Play demon, but that's because Quick Play only has Battlefield or FD, and because GSP isn't enough incentive to circle camp someone for 7 minutes straight. Little Mac gets a big buff from online play because his grounded moves are so lagless. He can spam them without getting punished, and he's harder to edge guard. but he's still not that good in the tournament setting. He never gets to play on FD, and he has to face zoners who will get a lead and camp him out the whole entire game. Very few Little Macs have actually won big Wi-Fi tournaments or even gotten that close. Even with the online buff, he's still not great against zoners. He still struggles to beat Shield if he doesn't have a KO punch, and his recovery is still so bad that he dies all by himself if he gets launched too far. He's just way more annoying to fight. Ganondorf While we're being controversial, let's talk about Ganondorf too. Ganondorf does get a buff from Wi-Fi. His arrows are surprisingly fast and hard to punish online, and he gets away with way more smash attacks. Edge guarding is also more likely to backfire. But Ganondorf doesn't really make it up higher on the list because of online's heavy zoner and sword meta. He's super slow and struggles to deal with a lot of Wi-Fi power picks like Sonic, Samus, Snake, or Rob. Disjoint characters can punish him for spamming with their big hitboxes too. 
Ganondorf is definitely frustrating to fight online, and he's even more of a mid-level menace than before, but he's not that much better at the tournament level. Donkey Kong basically gets the same Wi-Fi buff as Ganon. DK has the same surprisingly fast aerials and huge smash attacks. He's even got similar recovery problems too. He gets another little added boost from how tough it can be to stage tech online. But DK has the same issue of dealing with all the game's zoners and disjoints. DK will have a pretty tough time against the online meta picks even if he could brawl really well and get early KOs. He's the leader of the bunch, but he's still not the leader of the tier list. In some ways, Pit has a good time online. As a character, Pit is a pretty decent neutral. His arrows are fast and can win lots of trades. His arrow is decent at throwing opponents off, and he's got a few decent combo and confirms and smash attacks. That's good for online where the game often gets messier and takes more neutral interactions. But Pit's offline problems still apply online. His hitboxes are still weird and janky. He's still pretty slow and awkward in the air, and a lot of his sour spots and weak hits won't kill opponents. He also plays best when using drag down combos that can have some tight, Wi-Fi unfriendly windows, so he might be slightly better online, but not by much. Meta Knight The armored Kirby known as Meta Knight gets some buffs and some nerfs from online play that basically equal out. On the one hand, Meta Knight's tech chasing, combos, and edge guarding all get worse. You know, the cool stuff. But his forward smash spam gets a lot better. Given his size and speed, that forward smash spam is kinda significant. On lag, a spammy Meta Knight can be super hard to punish and take a stock decently early. But his playstyle changes a lot, and he can't build up damage or be as threatening in neutral. It all evens out, but it's another unfortunate example of a character getting more linear online. Diddy Kong is very much about reacting and punishing opponents. He sets up problem areas with his banana and uses it a lot to get the KOs. Online, it's a lot harder for him to react in time to his opponent and follow up or create an opening. That's a big nerf. Oh, and he's probably going to drop that infinite of his if there's any kind of spike and delay. And spikes happen even on good tournament connections. Diddy Kong still has some good neutral tools and he can still use the fast moves as well, but he's just not as good. Corrin. Now time for some good news. Corrin's not that bad. The delay from online play makes it pretty hard to punish Corrin's large hitboxes and makes the pin a lot safer. Their projectiles get a lot better and a lot scarier too. Corrin might actually be in mid-tier if we all played in a terrible nightmare world where net play was our only option. But since we live in this world, Corrin has a very small player base, even online. So they've got no results, and it's hard to say she's a lot better in practice as well as in theory. Plus, they will still struggle against zoners and other swordsmen who are faster and stronger. So they're still not that great in this meta. Mewtwo Mewtwo is a consistently hard character to rank because he has a pretty small player base. We just don't see him at top level that often. In Wi-Fi, that's even more so the case. In theory, Mewtwo has some nice zoning tools and good hitboxes that should help him online. A lot of his core combos and neutral patterns shouldn't shift much either. Having a solid command grab is nice too, since the spammy style of online play conditions people to shield. However, the other side of the coin is a tail hurtbox and super lightweight. In a match where both sides are slinging out hitboxes, the danger of Mewtwo increases. If he whiffs and extends his tail, he can get caught by an errant kill move and die. That's pretty big trouble for the OG legendary Pokemon, so we're putting Mewtwo in low mid-tier. But honestly, it's hard to tell. He could be high mid-tier instead, giving his zoning potential. Now we're on to the high mid-tier for Wi-Fi. Just like in offline, this is one of the biggest tiers. In a weird way, the game stays kind of balanced online, but like you saw in low mid-tier, the annoying characters and annoying playstyles do better. High mid-tier, Rosalina and Luma. Starting off with Rosa, this character is a great example of how Wi-Fi doesn't always change tiers, but it still changes playstyle. Offline Rosa is about the cool desyncs and the unique ways to use Luma. Online Rosa is more about spacing Luma to land a nasty forward smash. The buzz has shown that Rosa is surprisingly decent online, despite not being able to do as much cool stuff. She's pretty good because she fits even better in the meta. She doesn't fight as many rushdown characters that used to destroy her. Instead, she fights more zoners that she could play around. She's also able to control neutral just as well using Luma and still apply relentless ledge pressure. Ryu is another example of a character who changes their style, but not tier. Yes. Ryu does have more trouble with his inputs and his fancy combos and setups. However, Ryu's projectile is even better, and he's got lots of great raw kill moves that he could throw out. Not to mention, his biggest weaknesses is his disadvantage state. Since it's harder to push your advantage online, Ryu has an easier time landing and recovering. So Ryu trades off his damage output for better zoning and disadvantage. Ryu still isn't high tier because he's going to struggle against zoners and sorties up there. Ken. Ken is a similar character and a similar case. While he's not in the same tier, he's probably just a bit worse than Ryu because his projectile is worse. But Ken still has a lot of speed and raw kill power to keep him up from not being too bad. 
We often assume any mechanical complex, precise character is worse than Wi-Fi, but that's not always true. If they get an advantage from Wi-Fi, it's more like their character just changes, and Ken gets an advantage of a better disadvantage. He gets more chances to play and to land an early kill move. Believe it or not, some serious Wi-Fi warriors play him, like Sintonix. Terry. The best traditional fighting game character of all may be Terry. He makes it higher up on other lists due to his jab combos which are even more reliable online since it's harder to SDI. Relying on quick moves like jab is also easier online because it's harder to punish. Terry gets similar assistance for his bad disadvantage too. However, it can be slightly harder for Terry to recover in a perfectly optimal way that protects him from two frames. He's also going to struggle with zonish just like Ken and Ryu. He might be a bit better than them, but he's not a whole tier better. Luigi A lot of people are afraid of Wi-Fi Luigi. This character's super fast down special move is an incredible get out of jail free card offline. Online, where there's delay and dropped input, it's beyond incredible. On top of that, his Zair, Grab, and Fireball are all great. His kit has barely any end lag. Plus, his zero to death still works a lot of times. If the Wi Fi meta was all brawlers, Luigi would have this whole thing in a bag. But the Wi Fi meta is full of zoners and giant hitboxes that, if used right, can send the green Mario packing his bags to his mansion. There are some very good Wi Fi Luigi's and a lot of reason to fear Luigi in general. He's probably a bit better on Wi Fi, but all those rough matches hold him back a bit. Villager. If you're looking for a character with the exact opposite problem, check out Villager. Villager is a great Wi-Fi anti-zoner. His pocket, his Lloyd Rocket, and his tree give him great coverage and stage control. Villager does see some pretty good results from players like Pokeland and Kep2. He's also got faster, harder to punish moves than Isabel does. The problem is, he's pretty light and can die early due to some heavies and rushdown characters. His bowling ball and axe can get some nice early kills, but it's possible to play around both of them. So he's probably not zero to death in most characters. Now let's talk about some of the characters that got bumped up by Wi-Fi, starting with the Doctor. Dr. Mario's biggest problem is that he's slow and has a bad disadvantage state. Wi-Fi can't make him faster, but it can make him harder to edge guard. On top of a better disadvantage state, Dr. Mario has a better neutral. His pills are great projectiles and they really shine online, where you can't react to them. His insanely strong single hit moves are harder to punish and easier to land as well. He can even contend with zoners using a mix of cape and pill. His main downside is still his speed and his hitboxes. Faster sorties and disjointed characters can bait and punish him pretty well, but Underdock, a great Wi-Fi warrior, has shown that this character can still do work online. Ridley Like Dr. Mario, Ridley's hard hits and projectiles get buffed while his bad disadvantage looks a bit better. Ridley's still got the same problems of a huge hurtbox and bad overall frame data, but he's a decent amount better online, where he can spam fireballs, get grabs more easily, and land those F smashes. K. Rule. You can't really talk about Wi-Fi without talking about K. Rule. This croc haunts the dreams of many unsuspecting players. He's a bigger trouble at the mid-level and on quick play, but he does get a lot better online too. His projectiles are much harder to deal with, and he falls out of combos likely and more often. Unlike Ganon and DK, he can contend with zoners a bit better as well because he could zone for himself. He's still not a super OP Wi-Fi pick that we're seeing at big tournaments, but boy is he a lot stronger and a lot more obnoxious online. Piranha Plant the true heavy zoner threat is Piranha Plant. Plant lands much easier hits on Wi-Fi and can play really well at mid-range. It's much tougher to deal with pretty much all of his special moves. Plus, it's just as easy for him to ledge trap as offline. Piranha Plant is going to suffer against those really good zoners that can go really long range. He's also going to suffer against the fast and disjointed characters that can patiently bait him out. However, he's going to live longer and land more hits on Wi-Fi. We've seen even Best Ness switch to this character on occasion. Me Sword Fighter. Me Sword Fighter is another zoner who gets a bit better in an online tournament environment. Sword Fighter has a lot of useful projectiles that are harder to punish online. If the tornado hits, that leads to early kills as well. Sword Fighter still has a pretty weak moveset overall though, and some zoners in the tier list can beat out the projectiles. And a lot of the faster rushdown characters can dismantle this Mii. Me Brawler doesn't get a lot of play, but if you look at his kit, it's pretty nice for Wi-Fi. He's got some weirdly fast and hard to punish options, and they're a bit heavy and hard hitting. Their specials benefit from online as well, mainly the command grab and the shot put. Brawler will still get zoned and kitted out pretty hard though. A combination of a lack of speed and a lack of range will do that to you. In a Wi-Fi, the problem is just going to be even worse, but Brawler could be a good character to surprise people online with. Kirby Kirby is the last big low tier to make the jump, or float, up to the mid tier. This will probably sound crazy if you don't watch Japanese tournaments. Ron, the Yoshi main, has been beating up top players in top tiers of Sakurai's first son. Ron even took down Zack Ray, and it's because Kirby can scrap pretty well online. Plenty of Kirby's moves are fast and hard to punish online. His smash attacks are deceptively strong and far-reaching too. 
His combo game is pretty much just as good. He has tech chases that work even better online, and it's harder to punish his landing and recovery. He's actually a decent character online, he's just not that great because he's going to have trouble getting in on those top tier zoners and swordsmen. Peach. Now it's time to talk about the losers of the Wi-Fi trade. Peach is a pretty big one. Some lists put Peach way at the bottom and it's pretty easy to understand if you know the character. Her combo windows are so small and so easy to drop. She's still in mids here because players like Ling Ling and Samsora still get decent results. Plus she's still got great mobility, a nice projectile, and hard hitting moves. This queen didn't become a peasant as soon as the toads installed the router, but she's definitely not looking to be the best monarch in the Mario world anymore. Krom. This one might be a bit controversial. Krom has a long legacy of being a classic online masher character. He's got some great buttons and some quick moves. His jab to back air also still works, so he's at least decent online. However, dedicated Krom names have done pretty bad on Wi-Fi, and a lot of them have switched to other sorties. While Krom is decent online, he falls out of high tier because he does rely on reaction. Krom needs a tech chase and ledge trap to get kills and build damage. Online play weakens those areas for him and makes him tougher to play. This list is in order, but if it was, Krom would probably be on a higher end of the high mid tier. He's not bad, he's just worse than a lot of other sorties. Krom relies more on spacing and reaction, which are less consistent online. Joker. Like Krom, Joker is probably on the high end of this tier list too. He could actually be a high tier, but MKLeo dropped him for Cloud and Wolf, and that says something. Although Leo does make him look easy, Joker's combos are hard and very precise. Even a good connection could throw them off. A lot of Joker's quick ledge trump options, great edge guarding, and fast reactions suffer as well. His projectile, while decent, won't cut it in an online meta full of zoners. But it's not all bad for the Phantom Thief. He's still got great hitboxes, especially when Arsene is out. His damage output is overall still pretty high too. He's still got great base stats, great speed, great hitboxes, and one of the best comeback mechanics in the game. However, Ultimate has a stacked lineup and Joker loses enough of his edge that he doesn't feel high tier online. Lucas is another pick that's high on this end of the tier list. He gets placed high on the Wi-Fi tier list because he does have great projectiles that get better online. His grab becomes a bit safer too, and his arrows work pretty well online. However, Lucas is at his best when he can work with very finely tuned Zare and aerial combos. Online, it's harder for him to do that, making him lose his strength from Wi-Fi too. The result is a slight buff, making Lucas better online, but not really a showstopper. The results bear this out, as Lucas does have notable mains, but they haven't really outperformed their offline results. It doesn't help that Ness is so good on Wi-Fi, meaning his results get a lot more focus, or that Lucas' style is more orientated around precise combos and aggression than Ness. Lucas does get buffed online, but it's not clear that he gets buffed enough to high tier. We put him at high to mid tier, but it's a close call. Sheik. We're going to close out the spicy hot take reaction, starting with Sheik. It's pretty common to hear that Sheik is the literal worst character on Wi-Fi. On paper, it makes sense. She's super light, she relies on tight execution windows, and she loves to edge guard. All of that is bad news online. It's true that Sheik is worse online, but not that much worse. Sheik's needles are even better, and it confirms off needles still work in a lot of tournament connections. We've seen Void get really good results with Sheik in a few Wi-Fi tournaments because of that. It helps that Sheik gets harder to pin down too. Her bouncing fish is harder to punish, and her speed makes her really hard to punish online. She's definitely not great online, but she's been way outperforming expectation, and that's not all just luck and Void being great. Ice Climbers. To round it all out, we've got Ice Climbers. Before you go crazy in the comments, just take a moment to listen. Ice Climbers rank low on almost every tier list because of their desyncs having such tight timing windows that could lag and easily throw them off. Except that it doesn't. High level Ice Climbers still get a lot of desyncs online, and I mean a lot. Big D has been smashing the online tournaments recently. He's done just as good or even a bit better than offline. Salva, a Mexican Ice Climber main, has done alright too. Now, results do mean less on Wi-Fi, but when you watch Big D, you can see him pull off the desyncs people say are impossible. That's because a lot of these moves can be dialed up in the buffer while the animation is loading. So while they are tricky, they can actually work on most decent connections. On top of that, Ice Climbers have a lot of stuff you want to have on Wi-Fi. They've got good hitboxes, they got fast and really hard hitting moves, they've got a decent projectile, and the side B is harder to punish online. And that's not all either, Ice Climbers are harder to separate online since you often need to reaction tech chase Nana. They're also harder to edge guard. Now you should be asking why Ice Climbers aren't better online. And that's because of the meta. Ice Climbers do have trouble with sword characters like Cloud and Roy, as well as zoners like Snake and Samus. They're definitely not OP online, but they're not terrible either unless you're playing online and downloading all seasons of One Piece simultaneously. With that, we're closing out the first round of our Wi-Fi tier list. Next time, we'll have the high and top tiers. Remember to check out ProGuys.com and our channel.
And remember, not to take any of these too seriously, alright? Regular tier lists don't mean everything. Wi-Fi tier lists mean even less, and they're really just more for fun.